Welcome to Decode. I'm Kellen Mace, and in this video, we're going to be learning about how to use GraphQL Code Generator to generate the TypeScript typings for our front end application using the GraphQL schema that WP GraphQL provides. We'll talk about what GraphQL Code Generator is and why you might want to use it, and then we'll walk through the steps necessary to configure and then run GraphQL Code Generator to generate our TypeScript typings. Here, I have a headless WordPress backend that's running the WP GraphQL plugin. If I go to GraphQL and then GraphQL IDE, um, you can see that I've composed a query here where I'm getting a post by its slug, and I'm specifically targ targeting the hello world post and then getting back some data about that. So this tool allows me to compose a GraphQL query in the left column here, and then click this play icon to execute that and see the data that my front end JavaScript application would get back. In my front end, I have this Next.js application um, that does this. So on the single blog post page, it receives some props and inside of that, it gets the data about a blog post and it goes ahead and renders the title and then the post content. Uh, so you can see if I flip over to this tab um, that this is up and running. Uh, if I go to the hello world route, I can see, you know, there's the title coming through and then there's the content. So this is all looking great. Um, but one nagging thing that I haven't uh, addressed yet in my project is this red squiggly line right here. So uh, TypeScript is saying that there's an implicit any type here because I haven't provided any types for these props here. Um, so uh, if you're familiar with TypeScript, you may see this and think, okay, I need to start, you know, manually, um, providing these typings myself. So you might do something like this and define either an interface or a type uh, called props, for instance, and say, you know, this thing that you're receiving function is called, um, is a type of props. And here it is. Um, and it contains something that's a post. And there again, you know, would be, we would need another type for that. So you may keep following this trail and say, okay, I will um, manually type out a type that looks like this where it's you know a blog post and all the data that we're asking for back and the types for each of these once we get to author though uh, we have some nested types here so we have um, the author node which is another type um, so you might continue in this way and have you know the user type defined like that and then avatar is yet another object with some nested properties so you may keep going and have net, uh, avatar defined as a type as well. Uh, so that's you know quite a few uh, typings that you've manually um, had to add to your code base here. And this could be made slightly more succinct, succinct like you could maybe combine some of these, um, but if they're needed in multiple places, you may just end up having to you know separate these types like this and type out all of this. If you're poking around in the GraphQL schema, um, you may realize that like if I command click on post, right here, it'll pull up the documentation and it says, you know, the type in the GraphQL schema is post. And then it has um, this strongly typed GraphQL schema where it knows, you know, all of the types for post. If I go to one of my nested items, like I said, author and then node was another type. If I command click there, you'll see that that's a user type. And on that, we have all of the types that, you know, GraphQL uh, provides for that. And then for the avatar, I'll control click there. This is yet another type in our GraphQL schema. And if I click through to that, again, it knows all of the types um, for, for each individual, you know, key value pair on um, all of these objects. So with that, you know, you may um, look at this and look at the GraphQL schema and think, wait, if, if my GraphQL schema is strongly typed and knows, all, you know, all of the types for this stuff already, why am I reinventing the wheel here in my front end application? You know, why am I manually typing out all these um, properties and their types here? Isn't there a way where I can just take the GraphQL schema here and use that to generate my TypeScript typings automatically? So I don't have to do this manual work of typing them out. So thankfully, such a thing does exist. Uh, and that's where GraphQL code generator comes in. It does precisely that. Um, I think it's uh, it can be summed up pretty well using this graphic right here. So this is what GraphQL Code Generator does in a nutshell. 
on the left hand side, you see we have a GraphQL type. So here it is, it's called note, uh, is ID integer content, which is a string. And then when you run that through GraphQL code generator, it's able to spit out on the other end, TypeScript typings that look like this. Type note equals, and you can see ID is a number, which is a valid type in JavaScript. And then content is string. Likewise, we have another type here called query where notes um, is an array of note objects. And that would then be converted to a TypeScript type where notes would be, um, again, an array of notes, but in the syntax needed for uh, TypeScript. So this um, is the tool that um, provides that kind of translation between our GraphQL schema and your TypeScript typings. So let's see how we can leverage this in our project. Um, so the end goal of what we'll do is to um, be able to remove all of these um, manually added typings and instead get the typings from um, the file that GraphQL code generator will produce for us. So, um, so what we can do next is head over here to the GraphQL code generator project and go to view docs and then to um, installation. So if you'd like, you can read about, you know, what GraphQL code generator is, which is just what we've talked through. And then when you're ready to use it, you can head over to installation. So these steps will walk through together um, in our front end project. So first uh, you run yarn add GraphQL or otherwise if you use NPM, you can do that. The next one would be to add um, GraphQL code generator. So this is to add the command line interface that um, GraphQL code generator uses. So I'll copy this line for NPM and we'll go ahead and run that for our project. Once that's been installed, we'll be able to run the GraphQL code generator wizard. So I'll keep reading through the documentation here and we'll get down to the initialization wizard section. So here we can run NPX, GraphQL code gen init, and this will ask us a series of questions. And at the end, it'll produce for us a code gen .yaml file with our um, configuration choices, as well as a few um, packages added to our package JSON file. So back on the command line, we'll go ahead and run that init command. And then uh, the first question it asks us is what kind of application we're building, Angular, React, Stencil, another framework. Um, so mine is a React project, so I'll go ahead and uh, choose that option. We can hit the space bar to um, toggle these buttons on and off. For the next one, it says, where is your schema? Um, so for us, this will be the slash GraphQL endpoint uh, that WP GraphQL uses. To find that, you can head to your WordPress backend and go to the GraphQL settings and copy this endpoint here. Um, while we're on this page as well, you want to make sure that we have public introspection enabled. Uh, that's required for a GraphQL code generator to be able to access this GraphQL endpoint. So once you've copied that, um, you can paste that in on the command line. The next question asks us where our uh, GraphQL operations and fragments are located in our project. So what some developers do is include .graphql files inside of their project um, where they have certain queries and mutations and uh, fragments and so on defined. Um, for my project, I don't have any .graphql files, so I'll just hit enter to accept the default. Uh, but if you do use those files, then you just enter um, the path to where, the, where those live. The next prompt asks us to choose which plugins that we want. So this base um, TypeScript one, we always need, um, but the next two we'll actually uncheck this TypeScript operations option, uh, you would want to choose if you do have .graphql files in your project, but if you don't, then you could go ahead and uncheck that. Some of the other options here are related to specific uh, libraries like Apollo Client or Urkel and so on, where this tool will generate some um, higher order components and other things specific to those libraries. For now though, we'll keep it simple and just um, install the TypeScript plugin. For where to write the output, we'll choose generated and then slash graphql.ts. This is where our generated typings will be written to. The next question says, do you want to generate an introspection file? Um, that's not something that we need, so we'll hit no. Um, how to name the config file? I'll just hit enter to accept the um, suggested codegen.yaml file. And the next question asks, what script in your package.json file um, should run the GraphQL code generator? So we'll um, hit generate for that one. And once you hit enter, uh, GraphQL code gen will initialize. So from here, um, we can see the output here says that a config file has been generated at 
codegen.yaml, and then we'll need to run npm install because some new things have been added to our package JSON file. So let's take a look at um, what has changed in our project. So we'll see that in the root of our project, we have a codegen.yaml file. And as you can see, it reflects um, my answers as we worked through the wizard. One note on the documents line item here. Um, I've noticed that leaving this line in will result in uh, GraphQL code gen failing if you don't have any .graphql files in your project. So what we'll do, because we don't have those, is just delete that line item and then save this file. Next, let's head over to package JSON to see the changes that have been made there as well. So we have a few new uh, dev dependencies. We have uh, GraphQL code gen CLI. That's the one we added a moment ago and ran to use the wizard. In addition, though, we have um, GraphQL code gen slash TypeScript. We'll also see a new script here as well. So we have this generate command that we'll be able to run that will kick off the GraphQL code gen process. So because new dependencies have been added, we'll need to run uh, npm install. Now that my dependencies have been installed, I can actually run the generate command to generate our typings. So I'll run npm run generate. GraphQL code gen then runs and provides me some output um, saying that it has parsed my configuration file and then generated uh, the typings, the output. So let's see what that looks like. If I head back to my front end project and uh, go to this new, newly created generated folder, I'll see graphql.ts, which is the name um, that we had given to GraphQL code gen. Inside of this file, um, we'll see all of the typings that were generated. So this file is kind of interesting to look at. Um, this reflects everything in your GraphQL schema. So you can scroll through this and see all of the types. Um, it might be interesting to you. Um, let's focus in on the few that we were working with though. So I said this uh, was type post right here. So I'm able to um, search for type post. You'll see here it is. So th these are the TypeScript typings that have been generated for uh, post objects. So everything is there. And then I mentioned that inside of that we have author and then um, node. So let's hunt that down just for an example. So we have author, there it is, and then the node. Um, first we have a connection, so we'd have to follow that. So there's uh, the type for the connection. Inside of that there's a node, which is a type of user. So if we search for that now, here's the type definition for a user. And our last one is inside of the user, we had an avatar and then a URL. So inside of user, for example, let's find avatar, there it is. And the type of that is avatar. So as the last type to look for, we could type for, let's type avatar. And sure enough, there it is. Now let's head back to my single blog post page and see how we can leverage this. So I'll head back to um, this slug.tsx file where we had manually defined these types. Instead, let's try to pull uh, the typings from those generated by GraphQL code generator. So um, let's import what we need from the generated folder and then from the GraphQL file inside of it. So inside of the curlies here, um, I can hit command space and then see all the types available to us. And the one we need is actually post. So we can import post from our generated types, just like that. So then this post can be used in this place. So that means we don't need our manually created post anymore. Once we get rid of that, we actually don't need user anymore because that was only used by our uh, post type. So we can remove that. And then likewise, avatar was used inside the user. So we don't even need that anymore. So this um, can go away as well. So what you're left with for a file like this is code that looks like this. Um, so we have a type just for representing our props being passed in, and then we're telling it the type is a blog post and everything else is taken care of for you know the type of post, but also all of those nested types as well. If I save this and then revisit our front end application, uh, you can see that everything's rendering out as it was before. Uh, we don't have any implicit anys anymore and all of our typings are taken care of for us. Next, let's talk about what to do with this graphql.ts file inside of this generated folder that's been added for us. Um, so this, as a reminder, includes all of the generated types and you would want to um, commit this 
to version control for your project. And that would become the source of truth for uh, any TypeScript typings um, that are used throughout your project. You can also regenerate this file as well. Uh, so example of this would be if you um, change the GraphQL schema in some way. Uh, for example, if you installed a new WP GraphQL extension uh, in your WordPress backend, for example, and wanted to pull in the types for that, um, that new extension, what you could do is run uh, npm run generate that command again, and this process would repeat. It would reach out to your GraphQL endpoint, run an introspection query to get all the types, and then convert that to TypeScript typings, and it would overwrite the contents of this GraphQL.ts file with those new types. Then you could um, commit that change, and that would become the new source of truth for all the type definitions in your project. Lastly, let's touch briefly on GraphQL code gen plugins and integrations that are available. So if I head over here back to uh, the GraphQL code gen site and I go to plugins and then TypeScript, you can see that there are a number of plugins available for things like React Query, React Apollo, Vue Apollo, and so on. Um, so if you choose to uh, install some of these plugins, they can generate more code beyond just the um, types that we generated. Um, some of these um, generate higher order components. Some of them generate custom React hooks for you uh, and other pieces of code like that that you could um, pull in and leverage in your project. So um, I would just encourage you to, if you use any of those libraries, to read through the documentation here and then consider um, you know, bolting on some of those plugins if you think they'd be advantageous for you. GraphQL Code Gen also has a few integrations. Um, so if I head down to Integrations, um, you can see them listed here. One I'll point out in particular is uh, Gatsby JS. Because Gatsby uses a unified GraphQL data layer uh, with many source plugins that, that you can install, um, there's some special uh, steps that you would need to do to um, add Gatsby integration, and also some community plugins listed on this page that you can leverage as well. So with that, we'll wrap things up. Um, hopefully you feel like you have a good sense of what GraphQL Code Generator is and how you could use that in your front-end JavaScript applications uh, to generate the typings for TypeScript using the WP GraphQL schema. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.